Um, I want to just start with a, a short warning that there are some images in this presentation that a few of you might find disturbing, so if there is, just look away, and, and there's no shame in that. I'm used to seeing these images. So um, this is the fellowship that the Winston Churchill Trust kindly funded in 2005, and the objectives were to study forensic entomology in the USA and Canada, uh, to meet various experts around the US and Canada and to receive training from them, because this was a relatively sort of novel and, and underutilized science in the UK, and to undertake research at the body farm. So I'll talk about that a bit more. And maybe you've stayed up late one night on Channel 5 and seen a documentary about this facility. So what is forensic entomology? It's the interpretation of insect evidence at crime scenes. It helps the police when they're investigating cases of suspicious death. I was only at a crime scene the other day and we were looking for insect evidence. And the biology of these insects can help us tell how a person may have died, when they may have died, and even where that crime may have been committed. So they're very useful things. When you see insects, when you see a fly landing on your piece of steak in the kitchen, think about how useful these insects can be. Um, perhaps um, you won't be thinking about this when you're looking at your steak, but we can use them for the estimation of minimum time since death. When you're alive, you can uh, you know, swat away flies, but when you're dead, flies land on you, they'll lay eggs, start to feed, and you can age those flies and potentially work out how long someone may have been dead. So you can tell it's um, maybe a slightly unsavory topic after um, tea. Um, but I flew into Texas, I mean flew into Florida, then to Texas, across to Indiana, West Virginia, uh, Tennessee, up to Vancouver, and finally Hawaii. And this is where all the forensic uh, entomologists happen to live and work. Um, so I went to Florida first, Texas, Dr. Jeff Tomblin, um, West Virginia, Tennessee, where the body farm is based, um, over to Indiana to meet Dr. Neil Haskell, uh, Vancouver to see Dr. Gail Anderson, and finally Hawaii uh, to see Dr. Lee Goff, who's probably one of the pioneers, modern pioneers of forensic entomology. So I went to Disney World in Florida first, and maybe the trust thought, what am I doing going to this um, resort? But there was a, a conference on forensic entomology, so there's lots of case examples and, and all those sorts of things um, in Florida. Over to Texas, and I was studying de decomposition of goats, because obviously you can't put human beings out everywhere, so we have to use animals as, as models of, of human beings. Uh, in, in West Virginia, uh, we didn't stretch to goats. We were looking at roadkill, and I was collecting flies from the roadkill and using DNA techniques to identify those flies. Indiana, uh, Professor Neil Haskell, out on his ranch, and he's probably one of the most prolific forensic entomologists in the US, works on maybe over 100 cases a year, and he puts out pigs um, to decompose on his farm. Dr. Gail Anderson in Canada, she studies pigs um, in the ocean because obviously if you've, you've murdered someone you want to deposit their body. Vancouver's got a big coastline, you dump them off the, uh, off the coast and you can study the decomposition of these pigs. And finally, Professor Goff, and um, he, he has retired now, but one of his means of transport to the crime scenes was this Harley Davidson, so I thought that made him quite a cool character. Next couple of slides are just about the anthropological research facility, or you know, better known as the body farm, perhaps, set up by Bill Bass in 1981, and, and really to get um, sort of an idea of how people decompose, basically, and, and to work out how long someone may have been dead. And they look at various crime scene scenarios as well. They also offer training. Uh, they train the FBI in body recovery, so there was a body recovered from the ground there. They, uh, I did some teaching of forensic entomology on one of their courses. And if, if you're interested in this and you want to donate your body, most of these bodies are donated, you can actually go online and fill in a form. But unfortunately, we're over here, they're over there, so you will have to pay for your own airfare because they, they collect within a, a 200 kilometer radius, but I'm afraid um, we're outside of that. They train sniffer dogs as well. I did uh, about three weeks um, research there while I was with the trust. Um, Obviously, I've kind of covered up maybe the, the more unsavory images, but you can see I'm recording temperature of a magnet mass there. And the thing about magnet masses is they generate a lot of heat. So the surrounding temperature might only be about 20 degrees centigrade, but actually you can read on there it's 42 degrees. You can actually feel the heat given off by these magnet masses. And then you know, there's scenarios involving concrete with um, organized crime when they're depositing bodies. They cover concrete um, over these bodies. 
Some of the temperatures that are recorded, um, the thing to point there, you see the green line and the black line. The black line is just the ambient temperature as um, you know, the, the normal air temperature, but where the maggots are, they land on the head first, and it's up to 45 degrees centigrade, so you can imagine how hot that is, and that can actually speed up their development. So you need to take that into account when you're giving these estimates to the police. So that's probably enough of uh, the dead bodies. And even the uh, Metro News picked up on that, and they said, um, you really don't want to look at my holiday pictures because they might turn your tummy. So I, obviously I don't agree with that, but maybe many people do. I was awarded the Paul Roger Prize um, by Her Royal Highness the Queen uh, when I came back in 2006. Um, there was extensive press coverage for the Trust. Um, I published articles on forensic entomology, for example, in the Journal of Homicide and Major Instant Investigations. For, that's for um, senior investiga investigating officers in England and Wales. So it's really put this topic in the forefront of um, the police's mind. And I was also an invited speaker at various national and international conferences. So this topic was, you know, really generated quite a lot of interest um, in this country and beyond. After the fellowship, while I was working at the Forensic Science Service, I sat, set up the uh, Natural Justice Unit with the FSS. And this is like using forensic ecology. So it's not just entomology, it's botany, um, soil all sorts of natural sciences to help um, us, the police investigate crime. And we developed these um, sort of crime scene insect evidence kits, and if you're interested, you can go to Scene Safe for about, I don't know, 15 pounds, and um, you can go and collect your own insects, maybe from that, that stake in your kitchen. Um, and we had notable success with the Forensic Entomology Service. Unfortunately, the Forensic Science Service is no more, but I've moved across to the Met Police, where I'm a, a senior forensic scientist, and um, we've just got a, a large lab um, in the centre of London. And uh, I carry on, actually, with forensic entomology research with the Natural History Museum. See that wheelie case there? It's maybe the one that you go on holiday with. But I've actually had a few cases where um, people like to dis dispose of bodies in those suitcases. And what we wanted to do was, you know, how do flies get into those suitcases? So we were studying sort of, you know, fly attraction to the zips and whether they can lay eggs through the zips. And if you're interested, we have published a paper on that, and I can give you um, that article later. Um, so yeah, bodies in suitcases, very interesting topic. Um, so I, and I give talks to schools, universities, and also at public events. And finally, um, so there was that article in the Metro News, and the BBC saw that, and they said, you know, this looks, looks interesting, how could we use that? Obviously, I don't know if you watch these TV shows, they said, um, Andy, can you help with the... Uh, you know, giving us advice on things like waking the dead. So obviously these aren't real bodies. This is uh, sort of rubber or latex with a bit of jam and, and sort, sort of maggots on there. And uh, I'm giving advice to the actors and actresses on you know, how you might use that entomology at a crime scene. Uh, silent witness, I'm holding a brain. Obviously the brain isn't in the chest, so it's not quite um, correct there. Uh, and also the body farm, Ripper Street, um, DCI Bank. So we do try and incorporate some sort of you know, useful science in those, those series. And, uh, you know, this is all from that, that fellowship. So thank you very much.